Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Lamp Light City. My name is Darwin and I play video games. This game here is very fun to play. It is a steampunkish murder mystery detective retro style adventure game. And I just love stuff like this. So in our last episode, we got more information on our uh, kidnapped child that we're trying to locate. And right now, I'm trying to decide, do we go to the Spectre Society first, which seems like it's going to be a lot of fun to go to, or do we go to the Lending Office, which is in Chandli, which is where our partner got killed. And I'm thinking, we've been bugged by our previous partner, who's a voice in our head, speaking to us through the ether. Um, he's kind of a pain in the butt. So, because of that, I'm going to Spectre Society first. Ha <laughs> ha! Ooh. Pretty. I wonder if Philip's steam-powered carriages will ever make those things go out of fashion. I wonder if... Mm, too dark to tell what's inside. We must enjoy the somber atmosphere. Anything else to look at? Oh, Nothing like the smell of horse manure in the baking sun, eh, Miles? Still, it's not as bad as the chum. Here we go. Yes? May I help you? Yep, she looks crazy. What the heck is in her hair? It looks like a raven or something. Um... We're gonna go sneaky side. This is the Spectre Society, right? I'm interested in joining. Ah, yes it is. Welcome, darling. Our membership process is a bit different to most social clubs. We require a sponsor. Sounds simple enough. Well, you see, we ask that sponsors be people who have passed on into the spirit world. Once you name your sponsor, I will attempt communication beyond the ether. When they answer, you will be judged and considered for membership. <laughs> Alright, buddy. I've got a sponsor. Excellent. What is the name of your sponsor, darling? All right. Well, Mr. Bill. Bill Legere is my sponsor. Seriously, Fordham? I thought you knew better than that. Bill Legere. Very well. I will attempt to communicate with him. She can do this all day. It's not gonna work. I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble communicating. Perhaps you can come back and try again later? See? Told you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Why didn't that work? Oh, hello again. How may I help you? I'd like to name a new sponsor. Yes, of course. Who is your new sponsor? Jonathan Davis is my sponsor. You knew Jonathan? He was such a kind man. Yes. I can feel his presence, and it speaks positively of you. Please, come in, mister. Um, I didn't catch your name. It's Miles Fordham. And I am Angela Maxwell, the founder of the Spectre Society. Welcome. That's a whole bunch of bupkis. May I offer you some refreshments? Some water or tea, perhaps? You're very kind, but I'm afraid I must decline right now. Well, please let me know if you change your mind. Don't you look at this place? It's like a candy store for psychics. Um, is it just me, or do these look like the twins? From a very, uh... Those are some creepy twin girls. I can see a passing resemblance to Miss Maxwell, actually. <laughs> I'm getting, uh, something about, uh, you know, the shining in there, huh? There's quite a few members in this group. Number 19th meeting, Angela Maxwell, Monica Brown, Sophia Shaw, Thomas Gilbert, Linda Walker. Can't read that one. Randall Faulkner, Henrietta Davis, Edward LaGrange, Cynthia Wilkins. Angela, the meeting was wonderful. Anyone interested in using in a used spirit board, please let Thomas know. Looking forward to having you over at the manor next week. Come around 8 p.m. and you can meet Charlie, Henrietta. Oh, Linda, 8 p.m. at the manor, and then the baby goes missing. 
I bet they had tea. I bet they had tea. I think I've seen one of these before. What does it do? It's a spirit board. We use it to contact spirits, and they in turn spell out a message with the letters on the board. Well, I've got a message from Miss Maxwell if she ever tries to use a spirit board around me. Behave, Bill, behave. Ooh, spooky. That ghost between the two people almost manages to look convincing. That's probably the storage case for the spirit board. What a fascinating device. Exactly what does it do? That is an etherometer. It's designed to pick up vibrations from the ether and translate messages from the spirits. Okay. A great man once said to me, Bill, you aren't going to get very far in life just staring at balls. He's dead now. But then again, so am I. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to know, Bill. Must be for the more traditionalist members. Members are free to borrow books. Let me check with me first. What do we have? I'm not going to read all this out loud, but I'll leave it up. So if you want to pause, you can read this. Thing we need right now. The plaque says Leonora Pattinson, seer. She looks like someone I would not want to fool around with. I never much cared for all that mystic stuff. Why should your life be dictated by a bunch of cards? All right, Miss Maxwell. Could I ask you about some things, Miss Maxwell? Certainly, darling. What can you tell me about the Spectre Society? Ah, where to begin? I formed this club two years ago, right after I moved to New Britannia. During our meetings, we discuss our experiences with paranormal phenomena and organize investigations. What sort of investigations? We look into places all around the city which have been reported as haunted. New Britannia is teeming with the spirits of those killed during the French and British takeovers of the city. Not only that, but there is a prevalence of mystic religious practices here in Gascogne brought over by immigrants from the Antilles. Fascinating. There are plenty of books on the subject over there in the bookcase, if you're interested in learning more. Time about Linda Walker first. I spoke with Henrietta Davis, and she mentioned one of your other members, Linda Walker. Can you tell me anything about her? Ah, Linda, poor dear. Of all our members, she is the one I feel for the most. Why is that? She's had a tragic life. But I believe the Spectre Society has helped her greatly. Not only has she made a good friend in Henrietta, she's also dealt with her grief in a positive way. She has devoured my collection of books, educated herself on many subjects. I would say she's become an expert on clairvoyance and metempsychosis. It's always nice to know that the club can help those who have suffered. Do you see her often? Yes, she comes by about once or twice a week. What can you tell me about Linda and Henrietta's friendship? It's so lovely to see them together at the meetings. They're practically inseparable. It's quite sweet. They often leave messages for each other in the guest book. When Linda found out that Henrietta was taking care of an infant, she even gave her a toy bear for the child. I remember Linda lighting up with excitement when she asked about him. She really loves children. It's such a terrible shame about... But please, let's discuss something more pleasant, shall we, darling? I want to know more about Linda. What's this tragic story about Linda you mentioned? Oh, dear. I probably shouldn't say. Hmm. 
Miss Maxwell, I'm going to be frank. I'm investigating a kidnapping, and Mrs. Walker is a person of interest. I need to know as much about her as possible to help me solve this case. Do I make myself clear? Well, if it will help, Linda was married to a man named Thomas. Together, they had a son named Alexander. Thomas revealed himself to be a terribly cruel man. When he gave himself over to the drink, he would fly into rages and beat both Linda and the boy. One day, she came home to find both her son and husband dead. My god, what happened? The police ruled it a murder-suicide. Poisoning, apparently. Linda has been trying to make contact with Alexander's spirit for the past year or so, but has had no luck. It really is a terrible tragedy. That is a shame. Do you know where Linda lives? Do you know Linda Walker's address? I'm afraid not, darling. Linda has always been somewhat private, and that's not something I consider to be crucial information. Do you know any way I can find her? You could always come back for our next meeting. It will be the first Thursday of next month. By then, we'll have completely lost track of Charles. There has to be another way of finding Linda. I'm sorry, what, what was it you said? Madam Psy, what? Metempsychosis, darling. It's a philosophical term which comes from ancient Greece. It refers to the transmigration of the soul after death. Is that anything like reincarnation? Essentially, yes. There's a book on the subject over in the bookcase, which can tell you far more than I possibly could. What made you decide to start up this club? I began communing with the spirits at a very early age. My twin sister, Rachel, died after falling into an icy pond when we were eight years old. I'm very sorry, Miss Maxwell. Oh, I appreciate your sympathy, darling, but don't feel too bad. Rachel began speaking to me shortly after that. She has served as my spirit guide ever since. Spirit guide? You mean you still speak with her? Oh, yes. Every day. In fact, I was just speaking with her before you arrived. As I grew older, I realized there were others in the world who were also able to communicate with spirits, and those who had an interest in what lies beyond the ether. And so, once I moved to New Britannia, I decided to start up this club so we could gather and share our experiences. Hmm. You suppose she can hear what I'm saying? Hey, Angela, try a bit less eyeshadow, would you? You look like a purple raccoon. <laughs> Nothing. Clearly a fraud. Ah, well. I was wondering. Yes? When you communicate with the spirits, are you able to stop? If I wish them to leave me, yes. I bid them farewell, and they usually depart back into the ether. What about the more usually. persistent ones? You do remember I'm right here, don't you? Well, just between you and me. Those spirits are best dealt with by having the other kind of spirits. Quiets them right down. I prefer soporific myself. Oh? You hear the voices of the spirits as well, Mr. Fordham. But of course, now the reason for your visit to the Spectre Society is obvious. Do you see? All our paths eventually become clear. I'm glad yours has brought you here. Oh, wonderful. Now she started rhyming. Don't get me funny <laughs> ideas about telling her about me. She may be a lunatic, but that's no reason to expose yourself as one, too. Do you know anything about the kidnapping of Charles Harris? I'm afraid I haven't heard anything about any kidnappings, darling. If you wish, I can commune with the spirits and see if I can help locate your missing person. That won't be necessary, Miss Maxwell, though I appreciate the offer. Oh, do I tell her about Bill? Why not? Let's have some fun. I don't hear the voices of all spirits, just one. Miles, what are you doing? Ah, you have a spirit guide. Please, tell me more, darling. I wouldn't call him a spirit guide so much as a spirit nag. This is a very, very bad idea. Do you know who this spirit is? Yes, it's my former detective partner, Bill. I shot him on our last case together. You shot him? He was on a roof being held at knife point by a burglar. They were too close. I took the shot, but missed and hit my partner instead. Oh my. You poor darling. Is he angry with you? Well, he is now. He doesn't think it's a good idea to tell others about him. But normally, he's the same as he was in life. He just wants me to find the man responsible for his death. I've told him I'm really the one responsible, but he insists it's the burglar. I see. This is quite the unfortunate situation. 
My advice to you is this. Spirits often know best. You do well to listen to him about keeping his presence to yourself. Not everyone is as open-minded as we members of the Spectre Society. Huh. Maybe I misjudged that. I know. It's been hard as keeping this from my wife. But I can't drive her away. She's all I've really got left. Your story has touched me, Mr. Fordham. I will do everything I can to help you and your spirit guide find peace. If I find anything out which might help you, I will contact you personally. Thank you, Miss Maxwell. I appreciate it. Well, that could have turned out much worse. I'm warning you, Miles. You tell anyone else about me, and I won't be so forgiving. Thank you for the information. It was very enlightening. Your it was my pleasure, darling. Which you can probably see, because I'm just recording my desktop. All right, so... So maybe speak to these pe people. This is Davis' testimony. Linda Walker is definitely suspicious here. But this timeline is, is really off. So where do we go from here? I'll be going now. May the spirits guide you to that which you seek. Let's go to the lending office. Hello, sir. Welcome to LaFay Lenders. I'm the owner, Chester LaFay. Are you looking to take out a loan? Not today, I'm afraid. I'm Miles Ford. I'm a private investigator. Look, I don't know what you've heard, but I run a clean business here. I don't need any trouble. And I'm not here to cause any, for the moment. Just keep your nose where it belongs, and we should get along fine. Wants to be a tough guy. Do you suppose LaFay turns the heat up to put some pressure on his clients? Come on, Bill. That was Must bad be soothing for, for LeFay to be able to look at this landscape while he sits at his desk. He actually has a degree in business from the University of New Britannia? What a waste. LeFay with a woman and a small girl. I wouldn't have taken him for a family man. A crew escaping a shipwreck on a violent sea. Not the most comforting painting to look at while waiting for a loan. I shudder to think how many people's financial freedoms are locked away in that cabinet. Hm, that's the latest model Computron. They don't come cheap. LeFay must be doing pretty well for himself. All right, Mr. LeFay. Let's chat. Mr. LeFay, I'd like to ask you some questions. Fine, but keep it brief. Tell me a bit about yourself and your business, Mr. LeFay. What's to tell? I lend people money? They pay me back. Surely it's not that simple. Well, of course I charge interest, otherwise I'd never make a profit. I know people don't look upon the service I provide very favorably, but without my help, there would be a lot more unhappiness in the world. How did you go about starting up this business? I didn't. My former employer, Mr. Roth, left it to me when he passed. That was rather good of him. Yes, well, he didn't have any heirs, and he considered me to be the son he never had. He was fond of my family, too. I try and keep my work and home life as far away from each other as I can, though. There's a lot of things in this line of work that my wife and daughter are better off not knowing about. Ominous. Tell me what you know about Malcolm Harris. Ah, Mr. Harris. Took out a loan about a month ago. Still hasn't paid me back. In fact, he sent along a letter yesterday saying he was having an emergency and needed more time. I probably should have refused to do business with him. As soon as he walked through the door, I could tell his type. What type is that? Upper class, bored with his life, trying to escape and doing it through vice. In his case, gambling. This guy is good. Maybe you can pursue money lending if the whole private investigator thing doesn't work out. But for some reason, I pitied him and decided to give him the loan anyway. Compassion isn't exactly an asset in this business, you see. Nothing to worry about in your case, then. Aside from that, I don't know anything about him. I prefer to keep how much I know about my clients to a minimum. It makes things easier for me. Exactly how much did Mr. Harris borrow from you? Is that relevant to your investigation? It would help to have an idea of exactly how much he owes you, yes. I don't feel comfortable telling you the exact amount, but I will say it was over 500 crowns. A considerable sum. Like I said, I probably shouldn't have done it, but I'll get the money back one way or another. I wonder what the other is. What's your policy regarding people who don't pay their loans back? 
There are a few options. For the first three months or so, I'll send them a letter reminding them. After that, I start to threaten them with legal action. You wouldn't believe some of the things people do to avoid paying back their loans. One client went so far as to fake his own debt. Do you ever employ any more unusual methods? If you're implying that I do anything illegal, Mr. Fordham, you're mistaken. Look, I have a family to consider. I'm not about to go get my hands dirty when there's plenty of legitimate ways to handle the situation. Are you aware that Malcolm's son, Charles, was kidnapped last night? I had no idea he even had a son. As I said, I don't ask my clients too many personal questions. Though now you've told me, I suppose that would explain the emergency he mentioned in his letter. Poor guy. Take a look at this piece of fabric. Does it look familiar to you? Sure, it looks like it came from a jacket. In fact, yes, it's the same fabric as the jacket I'm wearing. Would you mind if I took a look at your jacket? Sure, not a problem. Here. Can I turn it or anything? What am I supposed to do? No tears in mine, huh? Not a one. You clearly take good care of your clothing. I don't mean to discourage you, Mr. Fordham, but I've seen a lot of people with this style of jacket. Hell, even Malcolm has one. I remember he was wearing it when he came in here. I see. Thank you for the information, Mr. LeFay. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. Well, we're going to leave it right there. More questions than we have answers. If you've liked this video, please like it. If you like what we're doing here, please consider subscribing and spreading the word. In the meanwhile, my name is Darwin, and I will see you on the flip side.